how the food. Um, okay, today um, um, I'm um, just a speaker. Uh, I will talk about um, circuit breaker retries. So I think it's a very common topic uh, as um, uh, many of us actually uh, running uh, a lot of servers, especially like um, um, microservice. So let's uh, have a quick question. How many of you here use microservice in your system? Okay, so um, um, in, in my company, uh, um, microservice is, uh, yes, okay. It has a, um, a few components. I mean, like, just a, at the beginning, maybe like just a one or two components. But I mean, as um, the service, uh, all the service grow, we add more and more. And now, actually, now it's already very complex. So um, resilience has become a very important part to ensure that all the all the microservice can can talk to each other and to uh, maintain the st um, stability and um, um, especially the availability. When I mean the SLA uh, is indicator for uh, the quality of our service. So um, by definition, um, resilience is actually a concept um, for a service to. Um, Mm, yeah. To able to quickly recover from failure or fault, um, um, it actually uh, has a lot of topics. Like for example, um, uh, how do you maintain idempotency complications between uh, different server? How do you um, uh, define um, uh, the base limit? You don't want to let like, clients to call server too much. Um, um, today, uh, I, I would like to talk about um, circuit breakers. On a retry, so circuit breaker. Um, yeah, let's let's uh, take a very simple example. Uh, we have two service. Uh, one is uh, service A, and another one is um, service by B. So, um, uh, as requests from users coming, uh, we have um, a lot of requests. I mean, um, so that. Um, yeah. In service A, that's one instance. We process a request on a call service B. On a service B, actually, uh, uh, is uh, wrapped encapsulated in a uh, load balancer. On a, uh, that's a multi uh, instance in a service B waiting for uh, processing the request. Mm, what, what if uh, there's something wrong in the service B, for example, on database slow, um, um, network um, blipped um, connection between the A and B? or any un unforeseen circumstances. Uh, we actually, um, we can call it as it's a system fault. And it's actually very hard to prevent uh, fault. But, uh, but in, terms, um, in terms of microservice, we can um, create our design to prevent failures. So, um, that's whereby a uh, circuit breaker is actually a perfect example uh, of design to uh, prevent. I mean, if you are uh, you are in a service A, you have to think about if you um, you you we call service B a lot of times, and uh, we need to define a um, um, uh, mechanism to um, to uh, prevent the the failures from service B. We affect service A, and indirectly we affect uh, our user. So um, um, the more traffic, um, uh, the system failures actually um, we uh, be a disaster for our users, especially like um, I mean that's uh, like um, for example if your users um, they don't see I mean anything from a service um, I and they actually will they, they just keep trying the request for example you will take a booking and you will open the app and you didn't see anything and they just keep uh, clicking. Uh, the booking button, for example. So, um, in in a dis distributed system work, it is even harder because like, you have a lot of instances. Um, uh, in service A, uh, you don't know like, how many instances in the service B is uh, suffering. Um, you, um, it sometimes it's just like um, um, a DB uh, pick or I mean uh, unlike the event. So. Um, those uh, uh, failures actually from uh, uh, 
a service can touch the cast can be cascaded to uh, other upstreams. So, so we want to control the latency under the failure rate. And actually, we want to service A and service B to handle those errors uh, in a quickly way and a graceful way the most possible. So that is how I mean the circuit breaker uh, can, can um, stop the failures and actually like, um, um, uh, give a better user experience. So I mean, uh, let's um, go to the detail. I mean, how circuit breaker is uh, defined by using like um, uh, uh, state. So you can imagine that like, circuit breaker is actually something in your home to connect um, uh, different appli appliance. Um, the default of the circuit breaker always close. Um, you. So when the, the state is closed, I mean, all the requests will go through. And actually, uh, we call service B. Uh, once there's a problem, um, if we uh, go to um, um, open state. So open state is actually um, designed for the system A to be fail fast. Um, um, we have we define a threshold. For example, like um, actually just few criteria for the threshold. Um, by the number of concurrency requests, by the number of percentage of um, failure uh, requests, or by the timeout, um, for example, you call the service, um, another service more than 10 seconds. You, uh, you, you can mark it as like, um, uh, failures. So one is the open state. You can actually can move to the half open state by, um, by a sleeping time window. Uh, this one is like a peri peri uh, periodically checkings by um, by the circuit breakers. So if the in the half open state, the request is success, then actually we can move it back to a uh, closed state. And actually uh, it's, um, it will be less uh, our service A quickly uh, recover the original state. It can with the call service B um, immediately. So so uh, in in uh, um, in the um, in the example, um, in a, I think I believe it's not just uh, my company and also other companies they also use. I think a library from um, Netflix. So and the interesting that means the original library is actually in Java. So yeah, Java is still uh, not, not really a bad language. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, but I mean, the concept is actually, I feel like the concept is inherit uh, from uh, the chat uh, memory um, uh, managing system in Java. So you, you can imagine, right, in, in chat, uh, in, uh, in Java, you have a lot of threads running, and uh, you are locating memory for each thread. So here, I mean, um, there's a high-trace a Go library also do the same thing. Each A, it actually defines um, uh, each connection between the base A to the base B by using a circuit uh, breaker name. And uh, attached to that, we can define um, uh, three, three, I think, uh, um, the timeout values, I mean, the, the, the parameters for the timeout, the total car, uh, concurrency connections, and also the, um, the, the percentage of um, failure errors. So each IPN endpoint may have a separate track pool on a cache uh, to cast the, the state of the um, circuit name. So um, in, in the high level on uh, design, <coughs> high tricks actually um, offer uh, fallback solutions. So for example, you uh, call the PCB is fail, then what else you can do? For example, you can um, have you can have a table to cache all those like, um, previous response. And actually, um, this fallback will allow you to access. So actually, uh, in terms of uh, users, you, d you don't see like, I mean, the error um, apparently. So um, that is the fallback um, solutions. Um, so this uh, default result, we, uh, we create a better uh, experience um, for uh, customers. So, how do you know? I mean, how do you monitor um, uh, uh, this um, this sort of screen breaker? High high trick library actually offer you some few. Um, if you go to the uh, GitHub website, can you see? Oh, mm 
Oh, okay. So it actually offers you like few plugins. You can connect with your uh, instruments library. For example, uh, Datadog, Graphic. Uh, yeah, there's a few plugins here. Then you can connect with your favorite uh, instruments uh, service. Now, you can uh, monitor your uh, your connection from uh, from different systems. Yeah. So now let's um, see a demo. Okay. So uh, today we can I zoom. Okay. So um, uh, I I'm I'm defining a, a very simple uh, circuit from. Uh, one service, service, um, it's still right, so, yeah, I guess I'll name it as a producer right here. So I pass the time out is um, 500 milliseconds. And uh, yes, that's the most important uh, parameters. As a parameters, uh, you can uh, um, 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 try, it, try out and see what is the best of, um, value for your system. You run, um, I run this server, and this server actually we call uh, another service. And actually, uh, we trigger the call charge uh, producer API. Um, you, as you can see from here, the output of the, um, the call charge function is actually a lot of things. And actually, passing to the output channel. Um, if there's some errors in the, um, the, the chart errors, we actually put it, the, it's, we pass the error channel. So, I mean, which, which error is come first? In the circuit breaker, we immediately uh, change the state. So uh, I mean the the, the call chart producer API function is very simple. I mean I'm designed for the demo, so I put a, a, a OS environment to indicate that it's a failure or not. Okay, so let's try to run it. Okay, so the server is running. So now I'm uh, trying to um, run a, a curl command. I think you need to expand the font. <laughs> oh, okay. Many, many times. <laughs> Okay, so I run um, my server in the one one on the tab, and uh, in another process, I will uh, try to call it ten times. Okay. Okay. So actually, uh, if I see look at the server, yeah, everything is success. So uh, it's in mean, that's a perfect um, scenario I mean, whereby there's no errors at all. So. If there's a problem in the um, uh, server, you will respect the, the environment variable. Yeah, so, uh, okay, let's try to run. <coughs> Okay, so uh, we can see that uh, as first, uh, can you see it? No. Yeah, so one, two, three. So first three times, uh, you get uh, 503 errors. And uh, subsequently, I mean, the circuit, oper uh, circuit uh, is open. So uh, it's actually, um, uh, um, very easy to, uh, to, uh, to understand because we, we, we define our our parameters, which is actually the time out after like uh, 500 milliseconds, and also the number uh, request volume is three. So it means we uh, we uh, accumulate enough three requests to calculate the percentage. 
on the one it's like um, which I think it sends yeah questions. So the easiest denial of service attack to your circuit breaker protected systems would be to cause a lot of errors, and then they just shut down. Uh, I think in, in that case, if you want to protect your, your service, right, then I think you have to use some kind of like rate limit. No, I mean, mm. if, you, if you use the circuit breaker, how do we make sure that uh, some evil guys out there not say, oh, he has a circuit breaker, so I just throw a little stone and then he mm. puts out a big stone for me. I don't even have to do it. Normally, what you would do is use the circuit breaker for unexpected errors, mm. like 500 level errors. Yeah, so it's like database or the like server errors. It's gone, like the whole system is gone. So it's something that is internal that like unrecoverable panics mm -hmm. as compared to not found. <coughs> right? Yes, so I think, oh, so I think another point is like. But it's is very it, hard to protect against DDoS anyway. You need rate limiting or some sort of signal. Yeah, so I think if you look at the, the diagram I, I see at the beginning, like this one is like you are in a service B, a uh, service A. And uh, you decide this uh, see a uh, script breaker to cause this B. So um, I mean, uh, if you you decide something to cause someone, I mean you are in total control of your your resources. So if you are you are in the service B, maybe you think different <laughs> because um, uh, the the script breaker is actually designed. I mean, it's actually uh, placed as an integration point between two services. Yeah, and actually you can define. I mean, uh, based on the status code to. Um, to define the errors. I mean, um, I'm sure there are a lot of interesting government installations out there. <laughs> no, that, that's why they're not connected to the internet anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're not supposed to be until somebody gets very fed up with the deployment process. They're running the wire out of one room into another. Okay, so um, that is uh, for the second vector. Oh, so um, this is how you design your system. For example, you have multi service. So actually, you, uh, you, you put the, the three main um, um, uh, constraints, MOS, max concurrence, concurrence request, and uh, the error percentage uh, to be like, I mean, the, the first service, I mean, always like greater than uh, the last, I mean, the last one. So I mean, um, it's actually to ensure that you have enough time to, for the first service to get the full I mean, success um, uh, response from the, the last one. Yes, so, mm, uh, yes. For the question, how do you uh, like define the uh, threshold, percentage threshold view? Like? Yeah, you should use some config uh, management system. And if there's some, um, uh, some problem, I mean, uh, um, or you want to fine tune your uh, parameters, mm -hmm. I think you should better use, like, um, uh, you should store your configs in somewhere and actually have an ability to refresh it. Yeah. Uh, question about max concurrent requests. How does that work with uh, auto scaling? Is that like max concurrent requests per node or? Uh, this uh, max concurrent request is actually, um, it's actually per the time windows. It's not per, per node. Okay. Yeah. So if, if you scale up, you have to scale up your max current, concurrent requests. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So it's not direct relationship. It's more of a, this is the pool of the concurrent request that the IT library will look at it and calculate the error threshold that encounter. Yes, I think it's, I think they have a default um, window in okay. in uh, sort of like a window library. The pool is actually not necessarily a threat pool. But it's just a more like it's, it's like a window. The uh, high is looking at it like uh, for all the requests coming in concurrently on um, processing. What is the error now? And then make a decision like whether I should break the circuit or not. Okay. Right. But yes, if you have more traffic, your incoming traffic, then you want the pool to be larger because if, if not, then you are saturating your pool there for the windows. Okay. Okay. So um, yeah, let's move on to the next part. So if you see the circuit breaker design, I mean, maybe you can you ask yourself. I mean, what if like in service B, I mean, for example, they they are uh, they doing like a scale down event. Uh, they have 10 in, um, instances and now, I mean, they just scale it to scale down 5. And it, uh, immediately, like, I mean, maybe a uh, few, uh, few requests actually coming from uh, your service. 
um, it's actually hit the not existing uh, instance. And actually, you get some like uh, 500 errors. And um, uh, that actually, uh, because you have I mean, a false alarm for, uh, for security breakers, and I mean, how do you like, um, uh, um, I mean, that you, you, how do you evaluate on the request, actually, errors? Uh, has, um, so we try to um, a mechanism to, to keep uh, your request persistent. I mean, like, to, um, to, um, to make it, um, if you, if, I mean, like, it's, it's a kind of like, tolerance to, uh, to make sure that you, uh, you have like, um, uh, a buffer on all the backup, a uh, backup um, uh, time limit to control your um, uh, percentage of error. So actually, uh, you, you, um, uh, we can um, define the retry problem. is like you have um, um, n clients, and actually you have only one resource. And all these uh, clients actually try to grab this um, resource at, I mean, at, at the same time. So I mean, all those, all, each client only uh, uh, access one resource. And uh, actually, if they have a like, queuing, I mean, uh, uh, you cannot uh, get the results uh, instantly, so it need to be uh, retries, and that need to like mean uh, how you design um, your system to be like, optimistic um, concurrency control. Um, um, for saying that, um, um, uh, yeah, let's go back to the demo uh, just now. So, so I think uh, I think a lot of, maybe a lot of you uh, try write around this. But in the code, I mean, you have um, um, API functions. We just call it. Oh, maybe just retry three times. Then, uh, uh, if that's error, then that's uh, you. You could then retry <coughs> until like um, um, you hopefully like um, after three, three or, or more or more, uh, more number of times, then hopefully I mean the request will be success. So, what's the drawback of this mm, this code? Anyone know? Lots of requests conflicting. Mm, I think it's so conflicting requests would be like item potency, uh, potency um, of the request. So more like saturating your pipe, like mm -hmm. timing conflicts in mm. your router. Yeah, I think I think maybe it's a one one thing, but I think it's it takes time. No, it actually it's very fast. Why not going to Yes, it's no back off. So uh, no back off means like you are uh, um, you are trying to um, um, to eat um, service B um, the downstream uh, service. So I mean service B actually uh, will be uh, suffering because if you keep trying, actually you you you, you make service B like um, that doesn't have time to recover. So um, that is um, the reason we need to add I mean some back off time to uh, to get the buffer for the retry. So, yeah. So yeah, this one is like since better you you stop a bit. So actually you, you try to continue. Yeah. yeah. Exponential back off. But I mean this this part also. Uh, I mean maybe uh, if you think a bit uh, oh maybe your service actually your DB has problem. And uh, you is that if you try every one second, maybe it's not good enough. So uh, maybe a better solution is you. Yeah, you try it's every time it's like um, double the 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 timing uh, for waiting. So it's, so this is a back off uh, exponential uh, algorithms. <laughs> Apart from that, yeah, you can add the jitter. So jitter is comment okay. key. Jitter is um, uh, the way you uh, randomize your waiting time. You have um, for example, you have um, uh, from uh, zero to uh, 100 uh, milliseconds. You can randomize the between between uh, these uh, two uh, two values. The reason is you have, for example, you have um, you your the service is actually you have a multi instance, and all these actually retry the same times. So if you retry the same times, you might uh, service be um, maybe. Um, you, so basically, maybe break the is rate limit. So how to do that? Actually, you try to make all the other instance uh, randomized, and actually we try. To, I mean, we uh, uh, spread the request in small iterations. So 
Yeah. Uh, the 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 bank of register uh, always times is actually you can define your um, your flip time is um, uh, um, I mean depends on the the items. I think here I think I, I take like one uh, five item one is uh, the first one is you don't do anything. Second one you use uh, explore explorer backup. So every time you just double the the time you try before. Full it means that you just randomize between the two uh, values. And um, equal jitters, it means that you, uh, yeah, it's kind of like uh, you are still sticking with the, uh, yeah, sticking with the uh, the full jitters, but you just do a um, fluctuate a bit. And uh, the last one is the uh, related jitter, which is something you you define your uh, your own value uh, based on the the previous value you uh, you sleep. So um, this one is uh, if you make more sense because you are um, you're trying to um, to combine between the randomized and uh, the back back of time. So uh, let's see. I mean, uh, how how what is the result? See this result actually I get from um, uh, an article from uh, IDA, AWS uh, website about back of algorithms. Mm, so in terms of clients and uh, works, <coughs> if you if you retries instantly, it means that you don't have any uh, backup at all. Actually, you can finish very fast because um, um, the work. Um, uh, but the, your system actually, uh, we need to make a lot of calls because like, um, if you um, you don't have a, a buffer, then actually you might be like um, you can hit. Uh, a lot of, um, I mean, it's, it will be a big, very big number. So you can see like um, uh, full jitter and equal jitters. Uh, I have a quick question. Which actually has a, a list number of uh, works. The top line uh, is uh, on the non, is it? The, the non is not linear, right? No, the non is not uh, linear. You want linear? Yeah. So because if you have more clients, it doesn't mean that you have. Actually, I think the norm is most likely to uh, to be linear because it's, it's, it it didn't depends on the any time constraint. This is uh, a very strange curve because if a hundred clients you get it's better than linear. I expected, uh, yeah, maybe but, the curve should be the other way. But uh, it's so at a hundred clients you need almost twenty five thousand calls. Ah, not throughput. Okay, not throughput. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's number of works you need to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was confused as, as well. Yeah. But yeah, it's number of calls. Okay, got it. So I think it's it's how, how badly is your CPU pinned at yeah. yeah, you your CPU is very strong. Maybe you just mm, go with the first one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, I mean, you need to consider your clients uh, vs the completion time. So. Um, if you try to do a full equal jitters, this one. Can I use the mouse? No. It means the, the, the yellow one. So it means that you just wait for, um, for double the time. And uh, you do a, a bit, um, um, you do randomize between two values. So actually, you, you wait very long to complete to let all the end clients uh, finish the work. So um, how, did, um, how do you? Um, Define your retries uh, algorithm. It's actually based on your, I mean, your real uh, scenarios, whereby I mean you have a um, uh, limitation of um, the completion time and also like, the uh, resources you can um, you can afford for for the number of costs. So I think you can. I think my my recommendation is using the local related um, um, this one. Yeah, the last one. Because it's really it's based on the previous uh, sleep time. So I think this is something very easy to implement. And, um, it has like, um, uh, oh, actually, you, you can, I think uh, between the decorated and um, um, equal jitter, it's actually, um, um, sometimes you, you, uh, you, you should try both. And actually, you see which one is actually fit to your um, scenario best. So. 
Yes, now let's uh, do a recap. Um, so, uh, do, you, do you want to use both circuit breaker and retry at the same time in your, um, your company or your uh, project? So it is, it's something very different. Um, so the reason retry is uh, um, it may uh, incur more uh, waiting times, but actually it's not suitable for uh, online transactions. For example, you, um, you're waiting for a request uh, from um, users and uh, you will forward it to another service and you need to, uh, to uh, return in, like, for example, seven, uh, 10 seconds. So um, uh, it's actually very, um, circuit breaker is, is, should, be, should be suitable for uh, latency sensitive systems. And uh, to try to be use it, you should use it for your contract or workers. Because uh, or actually, in your code, you, you create a new world of things. That one you can use um, a worker, a uh, retry. Because actually, it creates a new context, and actually, you can have a, a freedom of um, uh, latency. Um, so, um, so, define um, both circuit breaker and retry. It also, I mean, um, uh, give you, I mean, give your service. Uh, I think uh, most of the problem that uh, if you uh, when you try to implement this too, is you need to uh, verify whether it actually work in um, productions. Uh, from my experience, um, the circuit circuit breaker, in, I mean, it's actually you feel a very flex, uh, flexible way to connect with the different plugins, or actually through um, instruments uh, monitoring. Actually, you can evaluate your um, uh, your values um, better. And also, like, um, mm, you can test your uh, interaction points and actually design your fallback algorithms. I mean, in the um, in um, in staging, and actually, you can test this. So actually, you make sure that in uh, in times of chaos, there's no um, failures, or you can actually reduce the number of failures as small as possible. Mm, some of the resources here. Um, even like um, for monitoring, uh, Netflix also has some um, library for more monitoring um, high streaks. Um, high streak though is actually a um, very good library. Um, you actually it, it try to uh, do everything on the original um, on Netflix high streaks doing on um, the back of um, explore explore natural algorithms. Um, yeah, it's actually for you to design. We try it. Um, yeah. So yeah. So that's all. Yeah. Any questions? How how do you uh, define your in practice? How do you define your the specific thresholds? How do you find your retry times and retry algorithms? Oh, okay. In so, practice. In practice, I know theory and all these things. Uh, in practice, you need to uh, design between. I mean, depends on. I think firstly is um, SLA agreements between the two services. So, for example, uh, service B is that oh, yeah, I cannot be send more than um, um, one thousand requests per second. So I think you have to stick to that. And um, uh, maybe you need to do a rules measure the the time maybe on staging and the productions, the time out uh, connections is uh, is different. So, um, um, keep, I mean, uh, um, using like um, I, I fine tuning. Guess, I guess my question is in the world of auto scaling, yeah. I know you guys at Cloud, mm. you should have a pretty big account. Why don't you just scale out? Then I think scale out, uh, scale out uh, is, is scale out actually uh, one of the, uh, the solutions to, uh, to solve the problem. But I mean, if, for example, um, there's a fault in the system. Uh, and actually, it scale actually cannot help on those cases. I mean, those are very rare cases. Yeah. No, no, I, I'm, I'm agreeing. So, remember Google load balancers crashed well, last month, this month, because of the time zone problem, right? So, you lost a whole chunk of availability there. So, what happens if your services are all in behind load balance that just died? Yeah. yeah. For for your cloud provider, how, what do you do? 
Yeah, so, so that is um, how you mean using Spring Backer to uh, stop the failure cascading. And, um, from any under underlying um, dependent service, um, I mean, you, if you are, are, are the, the upstream, you should always think about Spring Backer. If you are, are the downstream, you always think about um, you need to rate limit, control the, yeah, the service not going too much. And, uh, um, yeah, that's also other part of um, resilience. Um, for example, like, uh, idempotencies, um, how... You, Actually, the other pattern I use, instead of rate limit, mm -hmm. is buffer. Just dump it into a big buffer somewhere and then slowly read it back. Yeah, that's some other. There are situations like in grass example, no matter how big your buffer is, it's not going to be enough. <laughs> uh, at the peak hour of grab, you have all these people keep retrying. Right? <laughs> and if your app is doing a lot of retry, try to get yeah. that, uh, this okay. memory to think... work in grab. Mm -hmm. So what the problem with retry and uh, implementing the exponential retry back off thing is very important because all your retry is going to generate requests. And your, request, yes. your smartphone is going to, millions of them is going to generate so many requests. Even the service you bring it up suddenly will be bring down by the influx of the traffic. So with the circuit breaker, you can help to preserve the critical function, like database or something, not get hammered by all this. An example of where I wish I had had a circuit breaker was, um, for a client when I was working in a different company a long time ago, uh, the API contract required, of course, that if you had a 401, don't use the same password. Don't automatically retry with the same password. I mean, this is very simple stuff. They didn't do that. They implemented a retry for everything. 404, 401, 403, <laughs> everything. Something went wrong on a, on a deployment. Uh, in discussions, we decided it was time to invalidate the passwords. They're like, no, totally, we'll stop retrying stuff now. <laughs> we totally are living up to the expectations. Invalidate the passwords, cascading failure, every single uh, cell phone, which has this software call, which was a large number for this particular client, <laughs> very large number, uh, on the hour, every hour, started retrying every five minutes. <laughs> oh. Now, of course, they all have seen the same network thing, so we just got these ridiculous spikes coming in, which if we could circuit break that, we would have saved, the service. saved um, so many, so many hard hours <laughs> 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 Yeah, so I think that's all at the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you.